Hello, everyone. This is Victor Lund, CEO of RE Technology. Welcome to today's RE, Technolo uh, RE Techinar. Um, we're really excited to talk about a very interesting topic that uh, has emerged over the last few years as real estate agents have been um, diving in and learning about predictive analytics and predictive scoring and the way to anticipate uh, how consumers uh, are more likely or less likely to trade a home. And um, we have with us today some really exciting guests. I have uh, Tristan Ahumada. Uh, Tristan ha Ahumada. Um, he's a real estate agent with Douglas Elliman in uh, the California marketplace, just north of uh, Los Angeles, sort of the Malibu markets, as well as uh, Thousand Oaks markets in those areas. And uh, then as our technology guest, we have Adam Long. Uh, he's with a company called SmartZip, and they're kind of one of the leaders uh, in this category. So. The reason why we wanted to have this webinar is to really talk about how real estate agents are using data in a profound way in order to uh, begin to, to materialize the, the best effort in how to market themselves to consumers that are most likely to transact. And one of the things that uh, we've seen as sort of a laggard effect is that a lot of real estate agents continue to invest a lot of treasury in portal marketing. And portal marketing has long been considered a buy-side marketing tactic. In other words, that's where you, you try to find buyers. And um, so one of the interesting things that's happening in the marketplace today for most areas of America is that buyer demand is already so high that really if you have a listing and you put it in the MLS, um, in some markets like San Francisco or uh, San Jose, um, the market is so hot that days on market is eight days. So real estate agents have kind of tra transitioned away from a lot of buyer marketing and started to really say, well, how do I find sellers in the marketplace today? And, you know, if you think about it, you know, depending on whose estimation you look at, consumers are now moving about every 10 to 13 years. Um, so you know, you just begin to use a single data point like that and you, you start to say, well, what other data points can I factor in uh, to figure out who's most likely to sell? Well, clearly somebody who just bought a house in the last 30 days is probably not going to list that house for sale. So they would, you would score that person pretty low on a likelihood to transact. And there are other things that, you know, might score a consumer very high on a likelihood to transact, like the filing of a divorce or a single homeowner who passes away or some things like that. There are, there are triggers that you could imagine which would create an inflection point that would, uh, that would cause consumers to, to be more mindful about uh, possibly trading their house. A, a change in the household formation, they add kids or kids leave or you retire or changes in income, and things like that. So all of that data is now available um, if you know somebody's household address. Uh, it's, a, it's a little bit creepy, but that's the way Equifax works and other uh, reporting <laughs> agencies. So you can learn uh, quite a bit about a consumer using these big, you know, d big data machines. Um, the problem with the big data machine is that, you know, a lot of people need help putting it together. Like most real estate agents aren't going to go out and cut a deal with Experian and they're not going to be able to bring these large databases into a hosting environment and be able to sift through them with algorithms to figure out who in a farming area is likely to buy or sell. Um, the cool thing about SmartZip is they do it for you and they make it easy. And it's a subscription service that you subscribe to. And my guest here today, Tristan Ahumada, um, is, is going to talk to us a little bit about it. Tristan, are you here? I am, buddy. I jumped in like awesome. about three minutes ago. Yeah, excellent. Well, welcome. So let me just um, introduce Thanks. Tristan because, you know, I, I've always believed that um, there's nobody who can explain to real estate agents how effective a product or a service is than somebody who uses it. And, and like you're one of these, I hate to say it, but techie agents. I mean, you're really into to using technology to work as efficiently as possible. I know that you founded Lab Code Agents, which is the largest real estate Facebook group where where you guys are always constantly saying, hey, what did you hear about this or anybody using that and things like that. And, and you're constantly getting information from other agents about effective tools in their business. And then I know that you've, you've done some work with realtor.com and other portals where you've explained to real estate agents how to convert leads that you're getting off these portals. Um, so in my introductory remarks, I was saying that buyer lead gen is sort of low on the totem pole for most real estate agents today because the market cycles are so hot. 
with days on market under yeah. 10 days, you really, you know, buyers are, pl they're, they're everywhere. They're plentiful. You don't have to go find a buyer. What you really need to find is a seller. And one of the tools that you use to do that is smart. Tip. So can you just tell us a little bit about your business before we get started? Uh, what, what areas of California do you operate in? Yeah, definitely. I cover the Ventura County area and the Los Angeles County area of California. And I've been in business 14 years. We help out people buying homes in all price ranges from a small mobile home of $11,000 to big, big estates. I think our biggest one was at 33 million. So we've done, we've done a big wide range man and and we do test out a lot a lot of products because of lab code agents and we're able to see how these products function and how agents can better use them because i think the number one challenge that most agents have when they subscribe to a product or some type of a membership for real estate tech is that they think it's going to solve their problems by them not doing anything and that is a huge challenge. So that's why we're here. We just wanna help people understand the systems they need to have in place to be able to succeed with something like SmartTip because we're loving it, man. We've been using it since September, almost a year now. And we're getting, we're getting very, very good results. So just wanted to talk about that. Yeah, so um, you've been using it for about a year. What, what other kind of, like, when you look at your your marketing spend today, in addition to Smart Tip, where where are you guys investing? And right now what's the purpose for around each investment? We're heavily invested into Facebook ads, so Facebook lead ads, remarketing on Facebook, and and Google pay per click. So that's that's where a large portion of our of our money is going because. Not only is it inexpensive, but it, it gives the appearance that we're everywhere to the consumer. So when we throw in something like SmartZip, where we're mailing to a targeted audience, we're already hitting them online. And so when we combine both and then also have open houses and door knock and create a sense of a community through what we're offering, I think that's when we start seeing more success and that's where we have seen a lot more success because of it. So um, are you using a CRM system? I am. I, I, unfortunately, I have a lot of CRMs because we're throwing, <laughs> it, we're throwing like a CRM a month through lab codes. But <laughs> the main CRMs that I'm using right now, um, I've, been with, I've been using Commission Zinc for four and a half years now. I just stuck mm -hmm. with them and they have an amazing app. And then I have uh, follow up boss and lion desk. I think those three are my main CRMs for the bulk of our leads. And obviously the back end of, of smart zip. I don't know if anybody's taking a look, but that app is sick. I love the app. Does anybody ever That's talk great. about the app? The mobile app? Yeah, dude, that thing is absolutely amazing. <laughs> Yeah, we're going to talk about it today. Oh, I love it. Yeah, I love no, that it. is an interesting thing. Um, and, and are all of your CRM systems uh, mobile? Uh, or are they like one of the things you hear about? And maybe you could explain the difference between, in your opinion, why you like a mobile app versus a responsive design. Well, for us as real estate agents who are always out in the field, we need something that's going to work seamlessly on our phone whether it's a great mobile app or it's an actual app, right? A web app versus an actual app. And I still lean more towards the <clears throat> app because it just makes it a lot easier for us when we're, when we're waiting for a client or when we're door knocking, we just have, have that ability to be able to go into the app and put in the notes, look at who we need to talk to next, um, whether it's texting, calling, setting up a reminder, whatever it is, it's so much easier on an app so that's why uh, i say yeah you touch the you icon and you're right into the application versus Easy. you know typing a url into a browser and then trying to type in your username and password like all of the logistics around that i agree man and be kind of yeah no, i i i'm i mean i've always thought that both is the right answer but um 
but certainly the ability to uh, to have a mobile app versus just a responsive web environment is seems to be a lot easier to use just because of the you know the instant on type capabilities of it. Yeah, but so, you um, know what? Oh, go ahead. No, go answer it. Uh, I was going to say that I think one of the biggest questions we get with with SmartZip when we have agents ask me either on text or Facebook Messenger or emailing me. The biggest question we get is, well, is it working for you? Because I know I know that there's you guys have some bad rap online about it about smart zip not really working or people being ripped off. And I think uh, my my response is this is this I always say, look, if you do smart zip, it's got to be part of a bigger plan that you have. It just can't be. It just can't be. Hey. Look, I'm going to get smart tip and then put it into play and that's it. It's done. Game over. I'm going to get I'm going to get 100 listings a year. And that's that's where some people start saying, "Well, this didn't work. I didn't get 20 listings." And so I always have to start by educating and saying, "This is part of a bigger piece. It's like when you're door knocking, you're still going to have to follow up. You're still going to have to create a piece to drop off when you're door knocking." It's like when you're calling, when you're cold calling, you're not going to get it on the first call. You still have to go to the appointment and lock them in and then follow up routinely. Same with open yeah. houses, same with everything. So this is, this is the same thing. So the way that we've succeeded is by making it part of a bigger plan that we have. So the first thing that we did is through, through you guys is we identified what area we wanted, right? And I always say, stay, stay small. Don't, don't pick an area that's huge. That, that was my first mistake in the business because I did start by, by door knocking and calling. And uh, I wanted to pick a huge area, like a huge city, actually. And that didn't work. So as, as the years went by, I decided to just go smaller. And what we say is pick a farm that's about 500. I mean, that's what, and that's pretty much what you guys say too. You know, pick, pick a farm that's small to start off with because I'd rather have quality versus quantity. If I get a whole bunch of people that are just looking loose versus somebody who's super serious and I get one or two every two months, I'd go with that. And so, so the thing that that's you, what you're doing yeah. now, you're farming an area of 500. Well, I'm farming an area. It's the main I go out. Sorry. You still there? Yeah, we're here. Can you still hear me, Victor? Yep. Yes. All right, good. Um, so the area that I cover is about almost 400, 400 mailers a month that go out. And it's targeted. So the cool thing is it's not just going out to, to a whole bunch of people in an area like randomly. What it does is you guys, you guys have an algorithm that that has helped us choose the people that are probably going to move based on certain actions that they've done, whether it's, uh, I don't know all the details, but whether they've gotten a new job or they're, they're running their credit based on whatever, or they have a, a certain amount of equity in their home. You guys have like hundreds of, of things that you run into your algorithm. So you've, you've decided that I have like this top 20% in my area. And that's who the mailers are going out to. And when I tell people, so you're farming like, a larger just area of like, yeah, you're, you're the digital farming is on a, a number of like 2000 households covered, but 500 are sort of in the top quartile of people most likely to transact. You got it. So, so the, you're doing, your, smart tip, you're doing, yeah, got it. Yeah. My smart tip campaign is targeting the 500 that are most likely going to move or the top 20% of these people. Now, it yeah. doesn't mean I'm not in the area with the other 2,500 that are in this mm. farm or general farm. You know, we're still going out and doing open houses in the area so people can see our signs so that when they get our mailers, they're still going to be like, oh, that's Tristan. I just got a mailer from him, right? Mm -hmm. We're still yeah. targeting our audiences in the area in Malibu through the video content that we create on Facebook and Instagram, right? And then once they click it, 
we're pixeling them to retarget them again with new videos and new ads. So they're seeing us online as well. So, so you're digitally they, farming, right? We are. We're digitally farming and we're also farming you know, the old school way. And depending on your area, now I, I have, I cover a wide area, but this specific area that I'm covering with SmartZip is ultra luxury. And the response, I, I actually didn't know what response I was going to get. I was like, oh, yeah, let, let's do this. I'm all in. And I was surprised, man. I think I didn't expect to get as many calls and as many people inquiring about their home values as I've been getting. And what are those I think numbers it's because, like? well, we get approximately, on average, two, in the last, what, 10 months, we've gotten about two people asking for their home value a month, which is pretty good for me coming from zero. And we've gone yeah. on six listing presentations and you've got to see the, the, the listing presentations that we go on. It's not like a three, $400,000 home. They're 8 million, 12 million, $15 million home. So it's a little different. If we were in one of the areas that I cover that's lower in price range, I'm assuming from the numbers we've ran with other agents, that we'd be getting more listing presentations, but that's not the area I want to cover. Um, so with our area, six is plenty. I always tell people this, with one listing that we sell, we've got two listings um, that, we've got, that we've gotten from SmartZip. With one of these listings that we sell, we can pay for SmartZip for the rest of my life. So that's what I always say, at least. Um, that's excellent. And the idea behind it is though as you see it's part of a bigger plan right so yeah we're still we're still door knocking we're still we're still following up with all the leads that we have there from from whatever campaigns we have through facebook or pay-per-click because people are seeing us online we're doing our video campaigns and retargeting and remarketing to people that click on them in the first place we're doing open houses and the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to have an event for the locals, the people that we know, our sphere, some people that we mail to that, that show that they're interacting a lot more. And then just yeah. take that a step further because I want to be the go-to guy for this area. Sure. And this is part of that bigger plan, right? This is that yeah, nobody so, sees it like that that I talked to. So the, uh, the, Two a month that you're getting, like, how does that stack up against uh, your lead generation from the other, like your video targeting, your Facebook ads? Like, are, are you getting so the video, roughly the, the same number of appointments from those other tactics as you are from SmartZip? Are you getting more from those and less from SmartZip? So we're doing you know, where different it? things for each here. The video targeting is specifically for branding, a brand uh -huh. awareness. So we're not getting any leads yep. from that. It's Okay. It's going to be when they see my my mailer or when they see some of our ads that they can click on, that's when we would get the leads. But the videos aren't good. Gotcha. Now, the, the lead ads that we do and the pay-per-click that we do, we do get leads from those, but mostly buyer leads and mostly from out of the area. So international, outside of Malibu, so we're looking in Manhattan, Miami, uh, Canada, Vancouver, and so forth. So that's mm -hmm. that's how we get a lot of our buyers for the area. Now, sellers, we've tried the the lead ads and the Google pay per click. That just doesn't work the same for sellers. Uh, sellers in our area, they like to go with somebody who's local, and so mm -hmm. creating that brand awareness is part of it. And that's why the mailers play such a huge piece to this. And believe it or not, what the mailers look like matter a lot. We had one, we had one very recent listing presentation that we went to four weeks ago. I think I posted it on my Facebook page. Um, four weeks ago, we get a call. Well, five weeks ago, we get a call from somebody who lives in their home on Malibu, on the beach, on the water, 
and they're saying, hey, look, we're going to be in the area. We got your mailer. We saw that you had another property listed in the area, and we want you to stop by. And we're not sure whether or not we want to sell or we want to lease our home. And, I mean, leases are like 80000 a month in this area. So we're like, okay, either one is good. So we set up an appointment. We stop by. And when we meet with them, they have a couple of different mailers in front, in front of them. And they bring them out and they have all this stuff written on the mailers. And I'm going through my head, I'm like, unbelievable. This is a this is a $12 million possible listing. And this guy's writing on a mailer, and that's how he called me. So I'm just going, <laughs> this is nuts. So were they all I your mailers asking, or were they mailers from other firms as well? One of them was ours and another one was a different firm, but they weren't impressed with the other one. So they uh, they called us. Yeah, actually we're the only yeah. ones they interviewed. And then, you know, this is this is the part that I'm talking about. Okay, so we connected well. We showed them that we knew the area through through talking to them, through emailing them information. And then when we got there, they still had other questions like, well, what type of business have you done in the area or outside of the area? Or what are your qualifications? We've got to sell ourselves as well, right? So this, mm -hmm. in essence, is kind of like, it, it's part of the whole plan. And yeah. if you suck at your listing presentation or you suck at converting over the phone, guess what? The product's not going to do its job because you suck. <laughs> so... You, you've got to you've got to really see where you're lacking and then get better at that because once you're ready this product may be the right one for you and it may never be it just depends on, on where you're at or what your plan is when you purchase it the, the thing that i hate most about uh, agents is they're complaining about every single product and they're saying this doesn't work this doesn't work now look don't get me wrong there are products out there that don't work because we've tested a lot of them. But a lot of the times, some of these products are amazing and they're just not being used correctly. It's like they're, they're being seen as the magic bullet without the agent actually having to do anything. And that's just, it's not right, man. You brought up your listing presentation and I think if I know the area you're in, you must be a member of three MLSs, California Regional MLS, CLAW, <laughs> and Ventura <laughs> County, CCAR, right? Um, yeah, sorry, welcome terrible. to welcome welcome to the world. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, um, what what are you using for your listing presentation? Does Douglas Element have their own piece, or are you using uh, something they, that people would be familiar with? You know, Douglas Element does have their own piece, and it's really nice. Uh, but believe it or not, I only break out my listing presentation one out of ten times, and this was one of the times where we didn't even break it out either. So this is a twelve million dollar home. We're sitting there talking. The first thing they talk about is this mailer piece. They have all this stuff written on the mailer piece. They're telling us what was cool, what wasn't. And then they go into, do you know about this home? Do you know about that home? Oh, this was a cool home. And then they tell us a little bit about their history. Then they tell us what they want to do, what their options are. And then they ask us what we think the property would sell for and what it would rent for or lease for. And then we just listen to what they want. We give them the right responses, well, the truth. And then they start connecting with us deeper. Then they say, well, do we need to remodel anything? We go into the whole remodeling. And we just start a relationship based on, based on us being super authentic. We don't break out the listing agreement because that's not what it was called. It just wasn't called for. And yeah. we connected at a super, super deep level. They're like, you know what, we have, we have another agent that we've used in the past, but we connected so well with you two that we're trying to figure out how to tell them that they're no longer going to be our agents. That's what they said at the <laughs> end. And so sometimes, most of the time, you just have to listen to what they want. And if they don't, they don't want to sit through a, an hour or 30 minute listening presentation, don't do it. You just... You're just doing it as a service to you. Read the room. Yeah, that's a good yeah. point. So the um, well, that's a that's a pretty comprehensive overview. So if I can just kind of sum it up here, what what I'm kind of feeling from you is that 
but your advice to real estate agents is smart zip will work if you work it. By the way, your yeah. mailers, how much are you paying per mailer? Like, are you doing postcards? Are you doing mailers? What are you doing? I do a combination a of, yeah, I do a combination of things, but are we going to get into the, the mailer that goes out that's the actual letter? Or, or do you guys have a copy of that or an example? I was going to show it. It's, it's on one of the later slides, Tristan. Oh, cool, dude. Because yeah. that's sick. Yeah. Besides the app, that's the second sickest thing. <laughs> that letter is magic. Yeah, I'll so, talk about that for sure. Um, All right, cool. So how much, how much do you pay for those? Uh, for the letters and the – everything all together is about – 1700 everything a month for the right, areas so that little, are clever. So it's about three bucks per yeah. household because you're sending you out go. 500. Yep. Yeah. Depending right. on, yeah. No, depending on what's going out. Just, go, sorry, go ahead. No, I just, I think that's really important to understand because, you know, there's, as you mentioned, there's a lot of components to this, right? And SmartZip is one piece of it, but you know, you, you for example, if you use SmartZip and you don't send the mailers out, you're probably not going to be effective, right? There's well, one think, thing about knowing who's most likely to sell, but there's another thing about you know investing in the marketing to those people. And if the message isn't right, you could just forget about it. You might as well just throw the money in the trash. Uh, Does SmartZip help you with the messaging? They do, but you still have to choose what the message is going to be based on their selection. And you can even change it. Gotcha. That's why I wanted to get into the letter, but on the postcard themselves, look, if, if Halloween's coming up, make sure you have something that goes along with that theme or Thanksgiving or Valentine's, right? And yeah. if the market is hot, make sure that you let them know with the right message. And you can change it up a sure. little bit here and there. Don't just... Don't just click on whatever's next. Just click, 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 and then expect it to work the best. And that's why we love the newsletter because in the newsletter, we can modify what it says. You know, there's, a, there's a general message, but if you make it, if you make, make it hyper-local and include information about the local area, that's when you start seeing people read it more and engage more, especially with the letter. Gotcha. Well, let's uh, let's uh, let's a ask Adam to jump in here and start to walk us through SmartZip. And Tristan, as we go through this, you know, as, as you can lend insights to the folks on the call about, you know, how you manipulate the the tool itself, the best practices and tactics to cause the best conversion. Um, by all means, jump in and uh, and and interrupt our friend Adam and. Uh, and give them those insights for sure. For sure. Okay. So uh, thanks, thanks no, very thank much you. for that. And uh, Adam, welcome. Uh, thanks. I thank really you. appreciate you being here today. And you guys have uh, done a really great job develop developing some really cool technology. And you know, probably nothing better than having a successful agent like Tristan, you know, share his yeah. insights about you know the reality of it. Like you know, this is this is work. It's it's not just coming to you. But you know, if you work smart. Uh, you will be have a lot of success. So let's let's just talk a little bit about um, how you guys kind of formulated SmartZip and and why it works. Sure. No, I'll, uh, that's a, that's a good place to start. And I'll tell you, Tristan, um, it's good to talk to you too. He had this, you know, nailed down from the very beginning. And like the first couple of conversations we had about it, you know, with talking about LabCode agents in his group, there is the expectations around the program. And just what you said, Victor, if you don't work it, it doesn't work. We can predict every single home accurately, and if you don't engage and talk to those people, they're not going to list with you just because you know about it. Um, so that's really where we came from as a company. We were formed back in 2008 as a data provider to a lot of the real estate industry, working with investors, working with real estate companies. And then we had a couple of you know, extremely bright data scientists who are still with us today, um, and they started running some different regression models and algorithms. And what they realized is they could predict which homes were going to sell before they actually did. Um, and so the light bulb goes off in a you know, small Silicon Valley office um, and they decide, well, that would have a lot of value to a lot of professionals out there. So how can we put this together and package it and, and get this in the hands of people who could use it? Um, so that's really kind of where we started as a company and I've found it to be absolutely fascinating in my six and a half years, how I've watched 
you know, big data, predictive analytics, machine learning, which I can talk a little bit more about, um, evolved so much over the last six years to where five years ago, six years ago, people looked at me on a trade show floor like, what are you even talking about? Um, and now it's, it's a lot more common, right? People, people yeah. understand it a lot more. So it, it's been an interesting um, evolution there for sure. Um, yeah. But one of the things, just to kind of to set the groundwork before we talk about, you know, a little bit of smart SIP and how to use it, um, is, is the difference between kind of big data and machine learning and, and, and kind of how it's used. So data in and of itself really, you know, isn't even actionable, right? Because data is the singular bits of information. Uh, machine learning, just so everyone has kind of the, um, you know, the lingo down, is what we do when we take everything we know you know, and run it through a model and, and learn from what's happened in the past. Um, you know, there's a reason why, you know, BMW sends out nice luxury pieces to people who make, you know, over $150,000 and not someone who just graduated college. Um, it, it's because taking the information that's out there and then applying it is where you can really, you know, really benefit your business, you know, whether it's BMW or whether it's a real estate team or, or a single agent. Um, so I wanted to, to touch on that a little bit. Um, and then the other thing is that I've noticed is that there's, and Tristan, I'd love your feedback on this as well, and Victor too, is there seems to be some fear, you know, in real estate about how big data or how predictive analytics works and, and what, you know, what to do with it, and is it going to replace me? Um, is that something you guys kind of feel, sense, hear from people? Uh, I don't feel that at all. I mean, I no, think I Tristan... Don't, I don't hear that perfectly. too much. I, yeah. Yeah. I don't think they, okay, I, they feel that. I think they just don't know what to do with it. That's all. Right. That's that's that that's the sense that they're I like, get. I suppose it's a better way to put it. They're like, okay, I've got yeah. this now. What do I do with it? Right. What what do I do with it? So you know, the key is right here. You know, leverage the companies that are using data. You know, and then and then apply it in your business. And and that rolls right right in really well to kind of you know what we do. And then to using the example that you talked about, Tristan. Um, you know, what people typically do with Smart Zip is select a geographical farm of about 2,000 homes. Um, and the theory is based on this. If, you know, those turn over at an average, national average rate of 5%, that means 95% aren't turning over. So there's a lot of wasted time, money, and effort, and, and we all want to be more efficient with our time. So rather than focusing on the 2,000 homes and trying to develop relationships with that many people, we'll narrow it down to the top 20%. And just, you know, years of testing this early on pointed us to that. It wasn't a number we, you know, selected out of a hat. Um, we found that typically 40 to 50% of all the transactions come out of that much smaller number, making it so, you know, the agent, the team, you know, is focusing their effort, knocking on those doors, you know, more often of the homes that are most likely to sell, you know, so every dollar that's spent, every minute that's spent is, is really spent on the right people. Um, so that's the high level. And then the how do we know is kind of one of my, you know, favorite things to talk about um, just because yeah. I find this part fascinating and you touched on you know a, a couple of the scenarios that make perfect sense Victor early on and then Tristan as well um, but what we do is we get information from you know 25 to 30 different sources and on every property in the country we're looking at about 2,000 attributes and a lot of times more than that um, but I like to put it into kind of three big buckets right I start with all the public record information that we all have access to um, you know, all licensed realtors have access to. So, you know, bed count, bath count, lot size, square footage, length of residency, you know, all the little things about the property. Did they, you know, have they added anything? Have they done that remodel? Anything that required a permit? You know, that piece of information. And then we have everything about the house. So that's, that's one. The next thing we do is we look at the mortgage data because if they're, you know, paid in full and they don't have a mortgage or if they just refi into a, you know, a 5-1 arm or maybe they're coming up at the end of a 5-1 arm or, you know, any of those things, rate, term, LTV, you know, those things are all indicators. You know, they may mean something, they may not, but we got to look at them. And the last thing, and Victor, you hit on this earlier, the, the kind of creepy part um, or, or big brotherish part is that we do license a lot of consumer data. So we know a lot of things about the people in the property. Um, we know how old they are. We know how many kids they have. We know if a kid's going off to college or leaving the house or becoming that age. Um, we know when a new child comes into the home, you know, kind of as was mentioned. In addition to their credit worthiness, net worth, consumer habits, you know, all those things become like a big, you know, dossier on, on the person, their finances, their mortgage, and their home. Then what we do is we action it by looking backwards over the last 10 years in Tristan's case, all the homes that have sold in that part of Malibu that you focused on. And then we use machine learning to find commonalities between the homes that have sold in that area before 
to the homes that are there right now. And then we find when they have a lot of things in common, obviously those are the ones that are a lot higher ranked. Um, you know, and so for, you know, it's funny, you, you mentioned Tristan, you know, selling, you know, $11,000 mobile home and a $33 million estate, you know, those homes sell for different reasons. So we have yeah. over 150 different algorithms that identify it. So on those two opposite wild ends of the spectrum for you, you know, if someone farms each area, we're using completely different algorithms to pick, on the, pick up the different triggers. Makes sense, man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's kind of the how we know. So now that we know who's going to sell from SmartSit's perspective, what we want to do is put your brand everywhere. So for every client, and this is where, you know, any feedback from you is great. Um, we start with the set of landing pages that we're going to drive people to because our, our um, postcards and letters, you know, our lead generation from the, the point of view that each one has a trackable key code. So we know who responds when, and that way, you know, you get that information and know. So we, we set up the landing page. We do a really cool online digital marketing piece where we actually go out and buy the computer IDs or the cookies for the homeowners. And then we put Tristan's ad in front of those people, whether they go to potterybarn.com or amazon.com or look at fantasy football or the wall street journal, you know, Tristan's ad a couple times a week say, um, you know, will, will appear and they just kind of begin to get more and more of that familiarity with him. And it adds to the part of the plan as he's talked about with getting in front of people in different ways and, and really kind of, you know, putting yourself out there. I we love do that, the same that's part thing. of the branding. Yeah. Man. That's I, I right. love that so much. Yep, and that's where we talked expectations early on. The expectation with this is that, you know, for people to understand, they're rarely clicked on. They don't generate into leads very often at all, but it's that brand recognition, right? They've seen you, they recognize you. And I love the yep. story where the realtor doesn't have a lot of, you know, um, a lot of brand recognition, and then, you know, they work with us, and six to nine months later, and, you know, someone stops from the grocery store and says, you're in real estate, right? And, like, how good that feels that, like, you know, okay, this is kind of, this is working for me. <laughs> that's so true. Yeah. Um, and so then we do the same thing on Facebook. Cool thing here is that we can get right into the news feed. So of people in the farm, they can see in the news feed and have over, I think, 120, 130 different options. So if, you know, it's a buyer's market or a seller's market or inventory is low or prices are on the rise or whatever message you want to customize to the farm, you can use us to do so. And, and again, just like with the letter that we'll talk about in a second, we'll be able to you know, kind of get a message that's going to be most relevant to that and pick a backscape, you know, a background that's relevant to Malibu or, you know, if you're in Oakland, California, something that's relevant to Oakland, something that looks like the neighborhood you're selling, um, which I think, sure. you know, just gives you more credibility. Postcards, talked about that. You use the postcards, you know, they're five and a half by eight printed on both sides, you know, driving the brand of the agent. Um, and then we drive people to a landing page with a different call to action. There's, there's a lot, but they're in categories. There's over 400 postcard options now, which is important because you're going to market differently to, you know, Michigan than you are to Florida, right? And so we want to make sure we give our clients that ability to really have ownership of their brand and select what, what best suits them. Um, then here's the letter. And maybe a great thing to do, uh, Tristan, is talk about some of the ways, and I think you mentioned, how you've customized this before. Because here at SmartSip, we always recommend within this letter to customize it and talk about the neighborhood, talk about you. I have people yeah. who do, you know, invite the farm to do breakfast with Santa, right? If it's a you know, big family neighborhood. So anything like that, to me, goes such a long way. I agree, man. I think the, the, that letter is the yeah. best piece that you have. That's the most feedback I get from most agents saying, wow, that letter got me, got me this many uh, appointments or people coming in asking for evals on their home, like evaluations, home prices. Uh, so that letter is huge. So the more you can make that all about the area you're covering and what, what's so cool about living there, the better. The less you can make it about you, even better yeah. because it's not about you it's about the area and about them and then in the background they're going to connect that to you so i think that's important one thing that we do with our pieces that's a little different only so that we can keep track of things a little better is yeah. we put a specific phone number that is tied to the the smart zip advertising that we're doing so different than my sign calls, different than my phone, my uh, my ads that I put up on Facebook. It's different. This way, if somebody calls me from the letter, 
or from the postcard, I know exactly where it's coming from. And yeah. uh, we can keep track of it. So we know our ROI a lot better. That's great. That's that's a good professional tip right there um, to be able to track your lead sources and, and make sure that you know where it's coming from and where you're, you know, where money's being well spent. So, um, so yeah, and I completely agree. The letter we give as a template, it's all there and written out, but then, you know, the individual can, uh, can customize it however they want. And, and like you said, I think really, you know, speaking to the neighborhood and making it less about you and more about, um, you know, those kind of things make a lot of sense. Um, and then, because our predictions, and this is the key thing for, for expectations too, which you know are, are always so important, we're predicting people that are going to sell in the next three, six, nine, sometimes twelve months. Um, and you know, as as Victor and I talked offline previously, you know, the stats real that seventy percent of people sell with the first person they talk to. Um, and so the whole idea with with a program like this is is getting there first, and then having the follow through. To be able to stay there top of mind and, and make sure that when they do sell, even if it's five months after they become a lead or nine months after they become a lead, you got there first, you developed a relationship you know, in the living room as you did with that, with that couple that you talked about. Um, so we help with that by doing some email nurturing. So anytime someone responds. Yeah, Adam, yeah. Adam I think that's stats from the National Association of Realtors. Yes. Um, Tristan, in your experience with like the six, the six appointments that you've gotten since September, um, how many other agents did you find people were interviewing? Most of the time, they weren't interviewing anyone. It was just me. Just yeah. me or the team, so, which was super cool because we got there so early. Yeah, I think that I, I think that some of these direct marketing, direct response tactics with sellers, I, I think that the number may even <laughs> skew higher than the national mm -hmm. average. Yeah. And, and certainly, you know, Tristan, I, I know six is not, a large enough number to determine a, a steady cadence on but i think that direct marketing like this especially where you're doing a lot of what i call surround sound marketing and we heard from tristan that you know he is in addition to this advertising he's doing another a lot of other advertising community events and uh you know really staying engaged with their open houses and things like that and door knocking so you know all of those things you know certainly accrue up to I lose you guys there? Yeah, I think I'm back. Okay. Can you hear me, Adam? Okay, yeah, I can hear you. I think, yeah. I think we lost. Vic, I think we lost Victor. Um, but one thing that I was going to say that when you were showing that email is that yeah. you know it, it may be that you're going to get a lot more people that aren't really interested now, and sure. some people that are never going to be interested. There was one lady that we got in March, and I remember March because I remember talking to her a lot. Yeah. From the very first email that came through after her, after her asking for the value of her home, um, the value of her home ended up being like, well, let me tell you the story. She came through yeah. through SmartZip and she asked for the value of her home. It was specifically through one of the newsletter, through one of the letters. She opened up the letter, okay. put in the code. I got the message. I called her that day, and she didn't pick up, so I emailed her. And she responded back to my email. She's like, hey, look, I'm just looking to see what the pro my property's worth. I'm not thinking of selling. I'm probably mm -hmm. never going to sell ever unless you give me three times what my property's worth. And <laughs> I, was, I was like, okay, look, I, got, I got it. I got your message. She's like, so don't waste your time trying to, trying to give me the value of my home, but don't put a lot of energy into it. That's what she said. And so I said, no problem. I'll still send you the value of your home. So I send her the value of her home. She emails me back. And she goes, that's too low. I said, okay, let me take a look at it again. So <laughs> I took a look at it again. And I go, I guess it's kind of low. I took in a property over here and a property over here because all these are custom. So it's really hard to price them. And so I send her another value. She goes, that's, that's more like it. She emails me back. She goes, you know, I really appreciate you taking – a few minutes. It, it took me like 20 minutes total, dude. And right. and she goes, I'm going to keep your information so that if anybody else that I know neighbors want to sell, at least I know mm. who to send them to. And so her name's Stacy. And now we text 
now we email back and forth since March. Now I created a relationship, right? If sure. I couldn't close her because sure. that just wasn't there, I'm going to make a relationship out of it. That's the key. And so if you start looking at this, this, and everything that you do in real estate as a relationship, things start changing. And then you start seeing more doors open rather than saying, hey, this doesn't work, right? So now, instead of not having anything with this person, we've created a relationship. And I know that if I stay on it and, and I don't pressure her, I'm just authentic and just kind, right. sure. she's going to be sending me other things hopefully right so i'm taking a look at it differently yeah that that makes a lot of sense and it's something i've seen you know over the years of, of working with our clients the ones that that take that approach and and genuinely just take care of people um without looking for it to necessarily turn into something find that it yes. usually turns into something um and so i'm, I'm with you 100 percent. i think that's i think that's good business there so um so we, yeah the we call that a customer for life strategy customer for love life that. So it's yeah. like you, you, they're they're a prospect until they buy or die, <laughs> <laughs> or refer or refer, right? Yeah, yeah, yep, absolutely. So we want to stay in front of them with those emails. That's a good one. Just to wrap it up, then we then send out monthly emails with home trends reports um, and how things are changing in the marketplace using our data, um, you know, to the to the farm there. Um, we actually even have a concierge calling service for those who, you know, believe in, in, in cold calling and prospecting that way, but maybe don't have time or the inclination to do it. Um, so we, we have that and, um, and, uh, and that kind of wraps up the marketing suite. But, you know, the, 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 pic the big picture is take a large group of people and narrow it down to the ones that, that most fit that um, criteria of someone who's likely to sell in the next three, six, 12 months, um, and then hit them with all kinds of different marketing. and and put your own flavor, your own spin on it, and get out there and talk to people and, um, and do some of the things Tristan has talked about. And, you know, and that will lead to you know, more, you know, more marketing, you know, more transactions. And, um, and that's, that's our goal for our clients. I agree, man. I agree. Yeah. I, love that. I love that picture. Can you send me that picture, <laughs> right, Richard? I like that. Yeah. Hey, by the way, um, as, as we're going through, I see some of the questions are, are popping into the questions dialog box on the GoToWebinar control panel. For those of you who are on the call, um, if you have a question for one of our panelists, please uh, please answer the question in the question uh, questions dialog box and go to webinar and we'll answer them at the end. Um, you know, you mentioned emails here. Uh, how do you know a, a homeowner's email address? Good question. So we we don't start with that. We capture that through the landing page workflow when they're going to look at what the value of the home is or one of the various calls to action. So we tell them in order to send you a report on the property, enter your email here. Um, so they're kind of opting in at that point. And then we send them the report and then we follow up with the emails after that. Awesome. Yeah, which also helps get it for the clients. So, you know, so Tristan can, you know, can then follow up and, you know, do the, do his own thing with it as well, which, um, you know, is always good also. Yeah, my best follow-up email when we get these these inquiries is, uh, I'd say something like, hey, Adam, whether it's texting, calling, or voicemail, or email, mm -hmm. is I'd be like, hey, Adam, I got your inquiry. I'm working on the value of your home. Can you let me know if you've remodeled your home recently or added anything yeah. so I can get a more accurate uh, value. That's just something that we've been working for us for like five years now. Yeah, that's good. Immediately turn the conversation to talking about their home. Yeah, it's no longer about you being the agent and trying right. to rip them off and taking a whole chunk of their, your commission and buying a new sure. car. It's about helping them, right? Exactly. Exactly right. Love it. There, Victor. So, yeah. Did we lose Victor? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, so what's yeah, that? That's, cool. that's, what, uh, what's that's, that's kind of what I wanted to show on this side. Okay, cool. Well, let's uh, let's get into some questions. Um, so, one of the questions comes from another uh, really cool guy, very high tech agent, very successful, Roland Estrada. He says, uh, "How often do you email to the smart oh, yeah. homes, and how often do you door knock the same homes?" So. Uh, I guess let's um, let's learn from Tristan and then maybe Adam, if you have some best practices that you've learned through working with your customers, uh, why don't we have both of you answer that question? 
Adam, go ahead and explain the email part, how often that goes out. Yeah, for, for us, the emails that go out is after they respond, we start an eight-touch, eight-week campaign. So once a week, they'll get a different email with a different content um, and tips about selling your house or staging or working with a realtor or things like that, and then once a month after that. So that's our cadence. Um, my thing on the best practice would probably be, you know, then to have your own personal follow-up and, um, you know, and make sure you, you get them with a couple touches pretty early on to make sure you can secure that, you know, meeting or how can I help um, kind of scenario to have it unfold. But, but that's what I would recommend. Tristan, what are your, uh, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I, I, we do. We use it in a similar way, obviously, because it's built in. But what we add is there's a company out there called Altos Research. Mm -hmm. And it's not expensive. It's like 40 bucks a month. And what it does is it gives detailed information about the market for sellers or possible sellers or even buyers if you want to use it for that. But we put everybody on that so they're getting an automatic email. And then what we've done is we've created a campaign for all the possible sellers that we have on this so that they're getting – they're getting drips from us, not just by email, but it's text, voicemail drop, email, video email, and video text. And it's a combination of all of those through a year. Now, we don't bombard them, uh, but we mm -hmm. do touch on them maybe like once a month, so we alternate. One's a text, one's a video email, then a voicemail drop, and, and we try to hit them up on, on holidays as well so that they don't forget about us. Because like Adam mentioned about 30 minutes ago, most of the people who come through this aren't gonna buy tomorrow. Or, or, sorry, aren't gonna sell tomorrow. It takes a while, especially yeah. if it's a higher priced home. I mean, geez, it, it could be up to a year, year and a half. But the cool thing is once you hit a stride and once you have this going, then it's continual. Yeah, that, that answered my question. Good feedback. Yeah, yeah. Any other questions, Victor? Or are we good? Oh, mine was muted. Sorry about that. Are you door knocking those houses as well? Uh, I'm only door knocking them probably twice a year. And if it's okay. not me, it's my it's my business partner that covers that area. So it's not often, but they do see our face because we also have open houses in the area. So how do you handle the overlap? Like say you have like multiple agents that are using SmartZip in the same farming area. What what do you guys do for that? I mean, that's going to seem pretty unauthentic if two agents from different firms are sending the same um, type of stuff I don't think, to people. I don't think that, I don't think SmartZip does that, but I know other people do mail out to the areas that we have. And so that's, for us, it's really important that we come up with with a very, very unique pieces that that's our branding. And that's actually what we're working with SmartZip as of like 30 days ago. We're branding it even more to, to who we are so that we stand out a lot more. Adam, do you, how many people do you sell to a particular zone? It's not a limit thing, but what we do is we always show anybody when they're looking at it if we're already working and partnered with an agent in that particular area. And what we find is two things. One, people usually steer clear of where there's already someone who's established with SmartZip. Just, you know, my, my experience shows me that. They're kind of like, okay, I'll move down the road a little bit and look somewhere else. But second, um, and to speak to the authenticity of the marketing, Victor, which I think is a good point, um, is, you know, if Tristan's in there and he's selected his postcards or letters, you know, timing for the next, you know, three, six months, nobody could come in and market with the same piece. Um, so he locks anybody else out for that kind of marketing. So we don't have that situation, you know, where a similar postcard shows up, you know, a week apart. We want to, we really want to avoid that um, and really partner with, with one person per area. Awesome. Yeah. So Tristan, you picked a, a hyper luxury market. Um, yeah. Adam, like uh, you have all kinds of different markets that you guys uh, tailor to. Um, what's like, do you find that people do more trades in a particular price point or have more success? Like are conversion rates higher? Like what's the, what's the calculus sure. on, you know? Yeah. I mean, I imagine the median price point is where you see the most value, but I don't know that. 
Right. No, yeah, it, it's a good question. A couple of things. Number one, we absolutely see more responses to marketing when the median home price is not, you know, $5 million, right? I think Tristan, <laughs> what he's seen makes sense. And that's why, you know, some people say, oh, I only got two leads. But, you know, Tristan's approach is, I got two leads and they're people who own $8 million homes. Like these are relationships exactly. I want to cultivate, yeah. right? So, um, but yeah, we'll see people who, who come in, at, you know, in a $250,000 median home price, which is still a nice commission when you sell the house, um, you know, and, and they can send out a mailer to 400 people and get 12, 15 responses, you know, and sometimes more with the letters. So um, we do see more responses um, in that kind of price point. Um, and also we help people select an area. So I got a back end software tool that, that is a, a Google map with our data embedded into it. So if you don't know what your farm is or haven't uh, you know, identified where you want to be, you can work with one of my account executives and, and be able to select, to compare this area to that area to that area and decide that, oh, this one looks like it's turning over at a little bit of, of a faster pace and the data works really well here if you want to test that. So remember to, to, to look at that um, and make sure we're setting someone up for success. So we can actually here at SmartSip, if you're not 100% sure of where you want to be farming, at least give you some some data to be able to figure out maybe where the best area is for you. That's you know what, people, Adam, that's a oh, go ahead, really good point, man. Because uh, Nick Baldwin, who's my uh, co-founder here for Lab Good Agents, he chose an area where the average price point is 250, which is cool that you said that. And yeah. he's gotten he had one one of the letters that he sent out. He had 18 inquiries yeah. about value in a day. I was like, dude. That's awesome. <laughs> right. And uh, when when you and I sat down at the very beginning, when I was picking my farm, you told me, hey, you're not going to get a lot here. And I'm like, I'm okay with that. This is my farm. This is my area. This is what I want. Yep. Um, so, yeah, very good. You did guide me well, and my expectations are right there. Good. Number one. Yep. Awesome. So, uh uh, by the way, if you have other questions for our panelists, I'm down to the last question, and we're almost at the top of the hour, but type your question in the GoToWebinar control panel, and we'll get it answered for you. But um, the, the other area is uh, that people are saying is, like, is there a difference when you're targeting a second home or vacation market versus a primary residential market? Sure. Yeah, um, that's, that's also a good question. So um, we have that dialed in pretty well, and, and it poses some extra challenges, but how we do it is kind of what I talked to before, because we sell territory in Tahoe and Aspen and you know places where there are second and vacation homes. And, and I have to remind people, we're looking at these homes, because there's always been second homes and vacation homes. So when we're studying these areas over the last 10 years, we're always doing that. Um, and so since we know who owns the house, we're sending online ads to them in New York about their property in Palm Beach. We're sending wow. them letters um, or postcards to the home where they're receiving mail because we partner up with the CAS system to the US Postal Service. So we're getting, we're sending the letters and the marketing to them in New York, in this example, about their home in Florida. Um, and I've gotten call after call over the year from, I remember a broker in Michigan said, hey, you just sent me a letter in Michigan about my house in Georgia. How did you do that? Because that would really help me out. <laughs> Um, so, so yeah, just, you know, a lot of legwork and a lot of, you know, bumping our toe over the years to, to figure out how we can best serve our clients. But, um, so we, we can still be accurate and work well in second and vacation homes. Cool. Well, let's just uh, wrap it up. Tristan, give us, uh, you know, your, your top three, uh, ideas for, you know, tactics for best conversion rates using SmartSip. And then, uh, maybe Adam, if you could just tell us, uh, how people can get more information if they want to price up some markets in their area. Sure. All right. So first thing I'm going to tell you is get a phone number that's specific to these letters and the postcards you're, you're using. I use call action. You can use whoever you want. There's a few other companies out there. And the reason for this is because I know what my ROI is because if they're calling that phone number in regards to that postcard or that letter, I can track it. And I know how many phone calls I've gotten in the last 10 months because of it. To me, that's super important. Plus, it automates the responses, and I can keep them all in one place. That's number one. Number two, make sure that you have a solid listing presentation and a pre-listing packet so that when you do have the opportunity to go to these people's homes and present to them or drop off a pre-listing packet before then, you're all set. That way, you don't stumble along the way and be like, oh, I got the appointment, but... I I kind of suck at everything else. 
um, do that. And then also, number three, be authentic, be genuine, because in our day and age, it's not cool to be a hardcore closer. Yeah. But when you have the opportunity to to give someone their value for their home, don't think that they're going to sell immediately. Just take that out of your brain. Approach it like you want to help them, and that's going to just take you a longer way. That's it. Awesome, Adam. How do people? That's, that's really good. How do people figure yeah, out what so we it's got a little... for them to do it in their area? Sure, sure. We, we got we can work with a lot of different budgets. I, I know Tristan being in the ultra luxury, that's a, that's a higher end for us. But we can we can work with a lot of different budgets. Um, but really simple. Go to smartzip.com. Right at the top, you can put in a zip code of interest and a phone number, or email, however you want us to reach out. Um, so all you got to do is go to smartzip.com, and we are offering for um, you know for this tech and our. Um, no setup fee, and then 50% off digital advertising um, if you choose to use that part of it. So happy to take care of it. We love the relationship and, and appreciate being here today. So smartzip.com and, and fill out a, uh, a form with a zip code that might be of interest, and we'll be able to give you some information specifically on different parts of that zip code and, and show you how the mapping works and, uh, and kind of talk through the details. Excellent. Well, thank you both very much. This has been very good. Uh, we'll, we'll send the, the copy of this recording out to everyone who's attended if they want to share it with somebody else. Um, and I, I really appreciate you guys taking the time today to, to share your insights. Good stuff. Thank you, Victor. Yeah. Appreciate it, man. Thank you, okay. Adam. All right. Everybody have a good day. Appreciate you tuning in. Okay. All right.